Hello everybody, it's Dominique here of DomDrives.com here at Lakewood Ford in Lakewood, Washington. And today we're going to do a brief tutorial for the My4 Touch. Uh, specifically, we'll be focusing on using the navigation portion. So, a uh, quick overview, the My4 Touch is Ford's multimedia system that you'll find in some of the 16 models in the lineup as well as 15, 14, and 13 year models. And it is the multimedia system that is a quadrant system based on four different colors, Bluetooth, entertainment, climate, and navigation if equipped properly. So today we're going to focus on the navigation and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So first and foremost, you'll need the SD card plugged into the SD card slot holder. The vehicle that I'm using today is a 15 Ford Taurus Show. So it's got pretty much all the available options in it. So I'm going to go right on ahead. So to access our navigation tab, we're going to go to the top right hand corner. We're going to hit navigation there. And this here is our main menu screen and we see a full map display. And to the left hand side of the multimedia screen, you'll see here your beacon, which you can actually switch to, which is now a 3D view, an aerial view pointed north and another aerial view pointed south of that beacon. Next to it, I have two different views to where not only do I now have my map display, but I even have an arrow showing the road that I'm driving on in the city that I'm going to with turn directions listed below, given I have my destination inputted into the system. We also have some zoom out and zoom in options showing a quarter mile out. I'm going to go ahead and press that again. Showing a quarter mile out, three quarter miles out, five miles out, and then automatic. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to automatic here. So once we'd like to enter a destination, we're going to go to our destination tab in the top right hand corner where now we have the available options for how we're going to input our destination. So we have the my home address, which is your home address that you can save via previous destinations, points of interest, street address, which is the most common intersection and city center. Down below, I have favorites to where I can save favorites from previous destinations, points of interest, street address, again, the most common and the intersection. So. I'm going to go ahead and get right into one of my favorite menu options that pretty much makes Ford's navigation system very, very intuitive and pretty cool to operate, which is my points of interest tab. And once I selected my points of interest tab there, and I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, video quality focused in there. Thanks, guys, for sticking with me. Now I have several different options for specific points of interests grouped by category. So I have fuel stations, financial, which are going to be your banks, restaurants, accommodations or hotels, parking. And if I switch over here to my scroll down option, I have more grouped menu options, uh, coffee houses and cafes, shopping, electronics, parks and airports. In addition to that, to the left hand side of the category groupings, I have search by area to where I can actually search for a given area, whether it be points of interest nearby or points of interest near the city and state that I'm in. And in addition to that, you have points of interest near your given destination when you have it computed as your destinated route. So I'm going to go back here. Oops, excuse me there. And now I'm back to my points of interest. So let's scroll on up here and we'll use fuel stations as an example. So not only will it actually populate by uh, proximity, but I can even have it populate by price as well with that live information. Uh, this particular vehicle is not set to that. That's in your settings and uh, you can go through to the my four touch settings video for how to change that information. And I can also have this particular category grouping, which is fuel stations, um, populate in alphabetical order. Now let's go on back here. So I'm going to go back out of points of interest and I'm going to go to, uh, emergency functions here. And this is where, oops, I didn't mean to get out of the navigation tab there. Sorry about that folks. 
So if I go to my emergency tab here, now I can see um, within my area hospitals and police stations in the area or whether it be nearby or within a 10 mile radius, 20 mile radius, etc. So I'm going to go on back here again. And let's go to street address. Now this is going to be the most common way to input your destination information. And again, using the touchscreen format, you'll need to be at a complete stop for the my 4 touch to be accessible uh, for destinations via this particular menu screen. So what we're looking at here is an autofill destination input. So automatically I have the state or province which is selected for Washington State which is my current location and I'm gonna go ahead and just use a random address okay. So I'm gonna use the city of Tacoma so I'm gonna go T and notice the moment that I press T it's going to eliminate any of the unavailable letters for cities in Washington State that start with T. So now I have the only options for cities that start with T available for the following letter inputs. Now I'm going to go A, and again, it's getting rid of more letters. I'm going to go C, and pretty much once you get two or three letters into the given city um, that you're searching for, it's going to autofill the remaining portion of that city. So at this point, I'm going to enter a street, okay? So for numerical access, I'll hit the numerical button there, and I'm going to go 58th Street. Now notice, it filled in 58th, but I have 14 additional 58th Street Avenue Court West options. So if I select that 14 tab, now I can see 58th Avenue Court Northeast, 58th Avenue Court West, 58th Avenue East, Northeast, West, and etc. So I'm going to go ahead and go 58 Avenue East. And then at this point, I'm just going to enter the actual physical address for the home. So I'll go 1, 5, 8, 3, and that is it. So at that point, I'll hit go. Oh, and it says the address number is not valid. I did use just kind of a random address there. But again, it will actually navigate to middle of streets address range. So I'll go ahead and select that. And now it's going to take me to 58th Avenue East. So to actually begin the routing information, I'll need to actually set it as a destination, which is in the bottom left-hand corner here. You also have the option to set it as a waypoint, so if you needed to make multiple stops, dropping off multiple passengers, or etc., you can set it as a waypoint, which will give you the ability to set additional destinations beyond 58th Avenue East. And again, another great menu option to save this particular address as a favorite. But let's go ahead and hit set as destination there. Computing my route. Now Obey it's traffic laws. Be me. alert and use voice commands while driving. So please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. Here now I have my different views. So let's say I wanted to get rid of the arrow to my right and just see the map display. I can also mute the guidance route zoom in and zoom out and directly below I have it showing it's a 13 mile trip that should take me approximately 16 minutes so that's going to be the you know your main menu option for entering destinations I also have the ability to insert a destination via the intersection of that particular city as well as searching for a particular city center and in this instance let's go ahead and use Tacoma which is a, actually, no, we'll use something a little bit more broader for everyone, and we'll go Seattle. And again, once I press C-A-T, it'll actually take me all the way to Seattle there. I'll select there, and now it's showing me the Seattle City Center. Again, set it as destination, set it as a waypoint, or set to save two favorites. So again, just showing how you can break down the varying input options for your specific destinations. Also, we have the actual map here, and this is going to give me the ability to view my actual map where I can actually have point of interest icons on, which is right here, showing me gas stations, banks, hotels, etc., canceling the route directly next to it and to the far right-hand corner of the screen, view and edit that particular route. Up top here, I can actually show a different beacon for my vehicle 
which will sh show my vehicle as that pink dot that you'll see there on the screen. I'm not sure if you folks can see it there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the uh, video adjustment is displaying correctly. But going back to our destination menu, that covers our entire input options for given destinations. Now, let's go on back here to our actual menu here. And this is where people, um, a lot of our consumers um, and you know everyone that's a part of our Lakewood Ford family and as a part of our enhanced automotive experience, where you can really get into setting up your navigation to work the way that you'd like it to work. So let's go ahead and hit navigation settings here. And here I have my map preferences to where I can actually leave breadcrumbs. So for example, I can leave a trail of where I'm going, my turn list format going top to bottom or bottom to top, or parking near my points of interest notification. So if I'm looking for a particular restaurant that I've never been to, I may want to have my parking point of interest notification on to let me know that there's parking available near this particular restaurant that I've set, especially if you're in a given area, crowded metropolis, or a specific place you've never been to. We're going to go back here to our route preferences and again getting a little bit more intuitive to make our mapping navigation system work the way we'd like it to. You have your preferred route options to where you can have your shortest route be your preferred route, the fastest or the most ecological. And again, you have the setting to where you can always use your preferred route. And then you have an eco time penalty. And that's going to be with the vehicle giving you the... Um, amount of miles and amount of time it should take for that destination, it will actually score you whether based on how e uh, economically you're actually driving that vehicle to that given destination. For those of us who would really, really like to focus on our fuel economy. In addition to that, I also have my avoid freeways, avoid toll roads, scrolling down, avoid ferries, car trains and using HOV lanes for, you know, multi-passengers in my vehicle, especially here in Washington State. Down below my navigation preferences to where now I can have my guidance prompts using tones only or voice and tones. And for our destination input, would we like it to autofill the state and province, city, street, and numerical physical address of the given building that we're looking for? Traffic preferences, Really cool here, guys, and that's where we can avoid traffic problems, automatic or manual, traffic alert notifications, accident, traffic jam, and road closed icons. Scrolling down a little bit further, road work icons, incident map, driving in difficult conditions, snow and ice, smog alerts, weather warning, reduced visibility, and turning on your radio for must-have information um, given the specific destination that you're going on. Then finally down below my avoid areas to where I can actually avoid specific areas based on whether I you know, want to avoid a specific neighborhood or avoid a particularly congested area where I can actually add that specific address. And again, the whole idea behind it is to have your navigation working in a way as such that is most beneficial for your preferences and use. We have our guidance mute canceling the route, view and edit the route, and then your serious travel link to where you can actually call to get you know traffic alerts on route, traffic nearby, fuel prices, movie listings, weather, sports info, and ski conditions, especially for those of us here in the Pacific Northwest, those in any sort of area where they have you know your ski and snowboarding lodges. And this particular screen here is actually showing our sync services with alerts, calendars, apps, and you can even say, where am I? So I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. And for my specific customers, a part of our Lakewood Ford family, I really hope that this is content of value to enhance your automotive experience. If you guys have any questions, you can reach me here at 253-474-0511 or www.domdrives.com here at Lakewood Ford in Lakewood, Washington. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.